Okay, chapter 13 is on the temporomandibular joint. And let's look at the temporomandibular joint. This is a joint that is used very heavily. Uh, it's used a lot. It's used when we speak. It's used when we chew. It's used when we swallow. This joint that's right over here, which we will look at and if we were to uh, take away the muscles over here, this is what it looks like, which is a joint. It's called TMJ, temporomandibular joint. Let's look at how it got um, how the word came about. So temporo comes from the temporal bone. So our temporal bone is our bone right here next to our temple. So think about like when you get a headache, um, you might get a headache right or around here. You might be rubbing just behind your eye. That's your temple that you might be massaging when you have a headache. So that's part of your temporal bone, temple or temporal bone. And this is your mandible. So the area where the temporal bone and the mandible meet is known as your temporomandibular joint. There's a joint there, and that's what's called the temporomandibular joint. So let's look at this joint in more detail. So when we're looking at the temporomandibular joint, it is the articulation or the meeting between the condyle. So this is your mandible. The mandible has a projection at the top, at the um, at right here, at the back, and at the front. The one in the front is called a coronoid process. The one at the back is called a condyle. Some people call it the condylar process, but the mandibular condyle is what I'm going to refer it to it as. Here again, we can see the condyle. So it is where the condyle and the temporomandibular fossa. Fossa is a depression. You can see a depression right here. So this depression right here is known as the mandibular fossa. Okay, so mandibular fossa. We can also see it right here. It's a, a little um, indentation, and that indentation, that depression is known as a fossa. So what happens is when we are talking, when we are chewing, when we are swallowing, this moves, the TMJ moves, and the movement we get are gliding and hinging. And I'm going to come back to how we glide and hinge, how the TMJ works. So we'll come back to this. I want to talk about the articular disc. Right between the two bones, between the temporal bone and the mandibular bone, there is a disc. It's called the articular disc, and we'll see some better pictures as we go along. This disc um, is it's fibrous and it and is divided into two it divides the joint into two basically and I will we'll go over this but basically there's an articular disc right in the middle and right above it we have the upper synovial cavity right below it we have the lower synovial cavity so it does split into two which we will look at it's a very common area the TMJ is a very common area where pain can be involved so a lot of pain can happen here Think about if you're grinding or clenching a lot, your TMJ could be acting up. So let's look at the hinging and gliding moment, um, or movement rather. So if you were to open your mouth ever so slightly, so just a few millimeters, what happens is it hinges, which means that the mandibular condyle just, op just um, opens a little, it's like a hinge. So the, the mandible opens a little and it hinges right over here. But if you were to open a lot wider, like this guy over here, it actually glides along the articular plane. So this right here, this um, depression is known as your mandibular fossa. And then if you open really wide, it instead of it, so it starts over here and then it goes, oops, it goes down right here. So it kind of glides down. So when it glides down, let me just raise this back up. When it glides down the articular eminence or the articular plane that is known as the gliding so to open really wide you first hinge so there's a little um, it rotates ever so slightly here there's a rotational or hinging movement and then if you open really wide it starts over here and it glides down so the two movements we see with tmj are the hinging or rotational movement and the gliding movement Let's look at the condyle. So this is the condyle right over here. And in adults, these condyles are ovoid in shape, which basically means if I were to outline it right here, it's oval. Okay, so the very top of it is oval shaped or ovoid in shape. And they are, when you're born, 
the heads of the condyle, they're covered with cartilage. So cartilage is this like thing that we're looking at that looks like um, a white, um, strong tissue that we put right on top of our bone. It's, protect, it's there to protect our joints, it's there to protect the bone. So imagine this cartilage sitting right over here on top of the condyles. So it's really thick when um, at birth. And then after, as we get older, there is um, the bone kind of covers or forms around the cartilage. So the bone uh, forms around the specks of the cartilage. So there is cartilage covering the condyle at birth. And it's really thick at birth. And then it wears away. Okay, so we did talk about the mandibular fossa. I'm going to show you that one more time. So this depression that we're looking at let's see if i can move this up so this depression right here that is known as the mandibular fossa some people call it the temporal mandibular fossa again here mandibular fossa um, some people call it the glenoid fossa some people can call it the articular fossa it all means the same thing so this outline that we're looking at in red at the back right here is your fossa mandibular fossa now, there might be a test question that says, well, where is the temporal mandibular fossa located? It is located right here, which is just behind the zygomatic arch. Remember the zygomatic bone, which is your cheekbone? So it's located posterior. Posterior means behind. It's located posterior to the zygomatic arch. So right here is the mandibular fossa. It's located posterior to it. Another thing to note is that when we're looking at this fossa, what does the fossa entail? Well, on one side, we have the articular eminence, or people can call it the articular tubercle. So this bump right here is the eminence or tubercle. So the articular eminence is located anterior or in front of the fossa. And on the back, so posterior to it, right behind it, there is a tiny little fissure, a tiny little tear. Um, and that fissure is called a pterotympanic fissure, tympanic for ear, so it's near the ear. Um, pterotympanic fissure. So remember how I said the TMJ is, is split into two, there's two, it's divided into two. What I mean by that is that here's the articular disc, there is something above it and something below it. Right above it is the upper compartment and this upper compartment this is responsible for the gliding actions. Remember how I said this condyle can glide through the articular eminence or the articular plane? So if it glides through, it's the upper compartment that's helping it glide through. But if it was just to hinge or rotate in this area right here, then the lower compartment, so the lower compartment helps with the hinging action, with the slight opening of the mandible. So if you open really wide, you glide, the condyle glides. If you open just a little bit, the condyle just rotates or hinges right in this area. And this is the articular disc. It is a very thick or a dense uh, tissue made up of collagen. And it is between, it is found between the condyle and the articular surface. So near the t between the temporal bone and the condyle. It's very thin in the middle, although it, doesn't, may, it may not look like it right here, but it is thin in the middle and it's thicker on the outer edges. It is vascular, so blood supply, we see blood supply on the edges, it's avascular in the middle. There's no blood supply in the middle. And then on, around the articular disc, there's a membrane, and that membrane is called a synovial membrane. And the synovial membrane, it it secretes fluid. So there's fluid around the articular disc. And that's a good thing because fluid helps lubricate the bone, um, helps with the movement. So lubrication is good because when we're opening and closing, when we're activating our TMJ, uh, we want it to be lubricated. And so where the synovial membrane is, which maybe you could think of it as the dark gray, that's the synovial membrane. If there's a very thin layer of synovial cells that helps secrete this, the fluid, the synovial fluid, which helps for lubrication.
It's also a capsule. So capsule is something that covers the entire TMJ joint. And so this right here is a capsule. And so if I were to open the capsule, I would literally see the TMJ joint. So capsule is just it's a fibrous capsule that's just covered. Um, the TMJ is covered by this TMJ capsule. There's ligaments. Now ligaments are these things here. They're these things are ligaments and what they do is they connect bone to bone. So bones are connected together through these ligaments. So let's look at the different ligaments we see near the TMJ. We see a temporomandibular ligament. That's this right here. So temporomandibular ligament is right here and it's right near the capsule. We see the spinomandibular ligament. Remember, if you look at the word mandibular, it means it's attached to the mandible. All of these ligaments are attached to the mandible. Temporomandibular, spinomandibular, stylomandibular. That basically means that the ligaments end at the mandible, somewhere in the mandible. So if we look at the spinomandibular ligament, it starts at the spinoid bone, goes down into the spino, uh, into the mandibular bone or mandible bone. And if you see where it um, start. So it starts at the spinoid bone, or one end is attached to the spinoid bone. The other end is attached to the ramus of the mandible. So the ramus of the mandible is right here. Kind of Think of ramus for ramp, the mandibular ramp, the ramp that goes up. It's attached to the ramus. And if you really had to look really closely, where it's attached on the ramus is it's actually attached to the lingual. So let me zoom in a little bit so we can actually see the lingual picture. I'm going to actually make this bigger just for a second. So do you see this bony projection right here? This bony projection on the inside of the mandible, that is the lingula. So the spinomandibular ligament attaches itself right here into the lingula. So that's one ligament, or actually that's the second ligament. So we looked at the temporomandibular ligament. Now we look, and then we looked at the spinomandibular ligament, which attaches to the ramus, and if you had to be more specific, to the lingual line, it says on the lingual line, that bony projection. And then the last one is the stylomandibular ligament. So at the very back of our head, we have the styloid process. And the styloid process is like a thin, it's kind of like a stiletto heel that just sticks out. So the styloid, um, styloid process there's a ligament that starts that attaches to the styloid process on one side and ends at the mandible on the other side. This ligament is called the stylomandibular ligament. Remember, ends at the mandible. That's why the last part of that word is mandibular. So it ends right here on the posterior border of the ramus. Posterior means back. So at the very back of the ramus, this is the ramus, the ramp. Now a TMJ has to have blood supply um, for it to work. And so there are um, four different vessels, arteries, that help supply the TMJ joint. And so they are the superficial temporal. So superficial means above, temporal means near the temple. Um, so that's this artery right here. Deep auricular. So we have a deep auricular artery right here. Auricular again means um, near the ear. So these are near the ear. We have the anterior tympanic. So anterior means in front. So that's in front right here, the anterior tympanic artery. And then we have the ascending pharyngeal. So ascending pharyngeal is this one right over here. Pharyngeal comes from pharynx. So your pharynx is like the back of your throat. So these one, two, three, four arteries are give vascular supply, give blood to the TMJ. You could think of it as um, maybe a mnemonic can be like this, SAD. So S for superficial temporal artery, A for anterior tympanic, another A for ascending pharyngeal, and then D for deep auricular artery. There's also nerves. Nerves have just that there's messages that from the brain that get sent to the nerves to tell them out to open, to tell the TMJ to work. What are those nerves? So they're something called the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve helps the TMJ work. And the trigeminal nerve, the reason why it's called trigeminal is because there's three different branches in this nerve. So this is the trigeminal nerve and it splits into three. There's the mandibular 
branch or mandi it goes into the mandibular section, it can go into the maxillary section, and then it can go into the ophthalmic near the eye. And so within those nerves, there's also subnerves. And so the three branches of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve that supply the TMJ are these three. So those subnerves are auricular temporal, masseteric, and deep temporal. So maybe you think of um, MAD, MAD, to help you remember that. So masseteric, auricular temporal and deep temporal and the pictures are right there so this is the deep temporal nerve this is the masseteric nerve and this um, is the auricular temporal nerve these nerves help with the tmj help get, send messages to the tmj to tell the tmj to open or to work there's also muscles of mastication and these muscles of mastication also help with tmj too mastication means chewing all together we have eight muscles of mastication which means we have four on the right side four on the left side and they are listed over here um, i have another video in orofacial we're going to look at this in a lot more detail but i'll just um, briefly tell you what they are so there is the medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid muscle and again these muscles help for chewing so this is the medial one this is the lateral one we have the temporalis muscle, which is that big one that fans out right here near the temporal bone. That's the temporalis muscle. And then we have the masseter muscle, and the masseter muscle is cut over here, but it kind of goes from here to here. It's like the most used muscle for chewing, the masseter muscle. Now what I want you to know for the test is that the lateral pterygoid muscle, which again is this one right here, the lateral pterygoid muscle. This one helps open the mandible. This is the only muscle that will help open the mandible. But all the other muscles, they actually close the jaw. They actually close the mandible. So lateral helps open, helps the opening of the mandible. It protracts, it opens the mandible. And in any joint, it stabilizes the TMJ. It helps the TMJ get stapled. So again, medial pterygoid muscle, and again, watch my other video to help um, learn the different mu muscles of mastication. There's the lateral one right here. There's the temporalis, which is the biggest muscle for mastication, for chewing. And then we have the masseter. This is the one that's heavily used. This is the masseter muscle. Lastly, to end, I want you guys to know that the TMJ um, does get remodeled throughout life because it is a heavily used joint. And so... Um, Think about how many times we use it in, in a day. So if we're using it for so long, it, this environmental stress like bruxism, grinding, clenching, it can really damage or um, cause the uh, TMJ to kind of um, not work as well. And so it's continuously remodeling. There are cells around this area that help fix that area, that help remodel. However, with aging, of course, it, it may not heal as much right the changes can be degenerative so it does um degenerate with age all right thanks for listening